Okay. <laughs> Can I? <laughs> so hello, everybody. I'm Luca Capello Gizmo on Debian, and I will just give a brief status on one year later, the first time that Debian was available on the Open Moco Free Runner. The status, where are we now after one year? And mo this is mostly a continuum about the talk that I gave, of the talk that I gave at FOSDEM this year. So you can probably recognize some slides that are the same. Let me briefly show you how the talk is composed. The talk is divided into an open moco part, which deal about everything which is upstream, in a sense, and the Debian part. And so if we start with the open moco part, this is some sort of a timeline about the open moco company and the open moco uh, community. OpenMoco was a project that started internally more or less three years ago. They get, they get some code in 2007, they get a device which is this one, a developer device which was called GTA01 Neo 1973 to the developer in 2007 and then this, since this was a, an internal com, a project at the FIC company which is a Taiwanese company, the, they separated the project in a standalone entity which is the OpenMoco company in to the October 2010. They goes on and since they committed to free software and uh, to some sort of uh, free hardware as well, they provided the CAD files so you can uh, create some skin for your OpenMoco. And then finally, they got uh, completely public with uh, a device which is a, a continuation and developed more developed version of the GTA01, which is the GTA02, which is this one, black one, called Neo Freerunner in July 2008. And then in August 2008, they got the schematics, they released the schematics of the two devices. So as you can see, the OpenMoco is both a company, which is OpenMoco Inc., and a community which is openmoco.org. This separation is clear even on the website. Everything which is openmoco.org is the community, and everything which is openmoco.com is the company. About the devices, we have the Neo 1973, which, is, which, is, uh, which has, has, has this characteristic, is based on the Samsung system on chip, is a, it has a reader for micro SD card, is three band GSM GPRS 2.5G, not 3G. The GPS, Unfortunately, it needs a closed binary-only driver. The batteries can be compatible with the Nokia BL 5C and 6C models, and the, it can be charged through USB 1.1 mini plug. Then we have an, an evolution of the same device, which is the GTA 02, which is as the same case. So, if you create skin for the first, if you have created skin for the first one, you can use on the second one. The RAM, the quantity of the RAM is the same. The flash memory, in the internal flash memory has been upgraded to 256, while it was 64 meg before. We have a new Samsung system on chip, which is mostly the same as before, but with some uh, speed improvement. Finally, we have, not finally, but actually, we have an OpenGL accelerated chip, graphic chipset, which is the NES Media, but unfortunately, this chipset requires an NDA to get access to the documentation. The chip, GPS chipset is a new one, and you don't need any more any binary driver because it outputs NMA standard, so every device can use it like a normal serial, serial uh, port. We have Wi-Fi based on the Atheros chipset. In this case, you don't need any firmware, and uh, this, it's the OpenMoco company that wrote the driver. We, they added two accelerometers, so you can, you can feel, the device can feel the position in the space, and finally they add the host mode to USB, which is still 1.1, yes? The micro. Uh, hello. Yeah, it's working. Uh, okay. uh, is there uh, any uh, binary-only dr driver or, or firmware thing in the GSM part? So the GSM is uh, the GSM is in some sort closed because of regulation. You can upgrade. They, there was some sort of discussion because the pro uh, company that produced the GSM was not so keen in. Uh, allow, uh, allowing end user to upgrade their GSM firmware. They finally open market deal with that, and they you can upgrade the G GS GSM firmware, but actually it's closed because of regulation. The GSM, firm the GSM modem can be, can be controlled by 80 commands, which are uh, known and which are in some sort documented. 
in the framework daemon uh, program. And so you can do whatever you want, actually. But you cannot change everything because of regulation. And the same applies to GPS. So in this case, the GPS gives you some output, which is the standard output as a, as a GPS use, but you cannot modify the GPS itself, again, for because of regulation. So this is probably the, the most freeness that we can get about GPS and GSM. So they, they do whatever they could to get something free, but they could not succeed it because of not their, their fault. Then there was two more devices that last year were planned, GTA 03, a new case, new battery, new GSM, something a, a like not really a revolution, but an evolution with different stuff. They removed, for example, the uh, Glamo chipset because it, you, we, you need an NDA, so it's quite difficult to work on it, and no one wanted to work on it. Yes? When you said uh, you can do anything you like with the GSM, does that include now with the new firmware being able to send GSM voice data to it somehow and... Uh, and have that go out on the air? I don't know. I mean, I, I do everything for phoning and basic phoning. So theoretically, there are still some comments for AT comments that are not documented. So maybe you can do that, but it's not documented. OK. Uh, I was wondering whether it's possible to take GSM encoded data and send it straight out without it going into analog in between. You know, if you've got a noise that you want to send to the person at the other end of the telephone conversation, do you, at the moment you have to... It's not, not possible, okay. Um, you say that some GSM commands are uh, documented. Uh, it's not uh, the, uh, the 2GPP uh, standard? Uh, there's no part of that? Well, the fact is that this chipset, they use this, this uh, Texas system chipset, which is Calypso. And I found that as long as they go on with developing uh, the GSM part, they found, they found, they document new command. So it should be, it should be standard, it should be standard combat, but there are some specific commands for the chipset itself that are not documented. So for example, the deep sleep state or other power management stuff or how to communicate with them. So. There was this GTA, there was the design for this GTA 03, and they also planned a uh, new device called GTA 04, which finally should have had 3G and USB 2.0, a more advanced system on chip, and OpenGL support not based on Glamour, so based on the, chips, on the graphical chipset in the Samsung system on chip. Then I will briefly show you how, many, uh, how, how much distribution are available outside. This is just some screenshot. This is not all the distribution available. This is the first one, which is the OM 2007.2, produced by OpenMoco. And then we have the OM 2008, OM 2008, 9, which is not yet available. There are testing uh, images. Then we have community distribution, which the first two, which this is SIHR for stable hybrid release, a completely community-driven distribution. Then we have uh, NeoVento, which is a Germany distribution based on Debian, which is LXE, and then we have a first port of Android. So this is Android on the OpenMoco. And the port of Android on the OpenMoco is uh, backed by, by Colu, the company of uh, John Meadow Hall. So this was the situation. They decided to create a new stack for man to manage the telephone, and this stack was included in the freesmartphone.org initiative which with the idea of having everything managed by a uh, framework, which is a framework daemon, and expose everything to, by Dbus, so you don't need to care about the low-level part of the GSM, GPS, blue, uh, Bluetooth, connection, wireless, whatever, and you can control everything with Dbus. And this free smartphone.org initiative is uh, mainly driven by Mickey Lauer from the Open Embedded World, and at the beginning, it was founded by OpenMoco. This was the situation. And now, so in April 2009, GTA 03 was abandoned because of uh, high cost, and they could not get on with uh, every cost that they have. It was too expensive to continue, and so they decided to completely abandon it and move on a project B, which is still a not very clear project. And so they decided to get, go away from the business of a smartphone. And then, two months later, 
the company gets restructured, quite a lot of people get, uh, fi got fired, and the community can use actually the trademark and the brand of OpenMoco, so the distribution that were developed by OpenMoco are now completely community. The infrastructure, so th this, the website openmoco.org with the wiki, git, and the mailing list were given to the community, and every kind of documentation were given to the community. So mainly now, the OpenMoco company is working on something which is not anymore uh, a smartphone device, and every development is done by the community. By the very same people that were uh, involved in the OpenMoco or, uh, company, but they, they are now moved outside. And the community side decided something. For example, Illum and the Alignment uh, Window Manager was chosen as a standard window manager. Illum is a, or Allium, I don't know the correct spelling in English, is a, a profile, a specific profile of uh, alignment for mobile uh, smartphone. I will show you some uh, Sanskrit later. The, the, they decided to code for a new phone application, which is Paroli, which is based on uh, the Alignment Foundation library. The OpenWRT distribution came, uh, entered the game, and now supports completely the OpenMoco, GTA 02 at least, the free runner. There was another project which, started, uh, which was started by the same guys that were working in the OpenMoco company, and which is called GTA 02 Core. And actually, it's the GTA 02 without bad stuff, for example, like the Glamour chipset. So they decided to remove the Glamour chipset and decided to do some other small modification. This is not really a project that will uh, finalize on a, on a product. It's more or less a proof of concept of what we can, do, we can do if we have every specification, if we have access to everything. They are still working on it. The idea will be to produce CAD files and then finally find a company that can produce the phone. So, and then freesmartphone.org move, oh, move, uh, move, move to SHR as the base distribution. So every new uh, feature of freesmartphone.org will be uh, available in SHR, which is now the mostly used distribu distribution. And this is the news of uh, yesterday, 29th July. There was a, uh, the, very guy, the very same guy involved in freesmartphone.org founded a company, which is BGB in order to support freesmartphone.org even at a commercial level. So we have, this is a German company uh, where they're composed by four people, which are the four people that work on freesmartphone.org. Now Debian. So this is the picture of last year. Last year, uh, most, more, quite a lot of Debian developers, quite a lot, some Debian developers that were in uh, DECOF 8 in Argentina got an OpenMoco. The OpenMoco went out in uh, July. 2008, and the DevConf in Argentina was in July, in August 2008, and so we worked on um, trying to install the Debian on the OpenMoco in the same way. And the result was that at the end of DevConf 8, we had a, a script to install, we had a way to install Debian on the OpenMoco. We have quite a lot of resources, and I wrote again there because it's, uh, not anyone is aware of them. We have a public project, which is an alias project called a package FSO. If you, someone wants to contact us, we have an alias mailing list for everything which is completely packaging related. There's, we, we use the most of the same mailing list, which is the smartphone-userland kernel or standards mailing list for every kind of discussion because we want to work very, very finely tuned with, to get with the stream. And then we have IRC channels, which is the open mock develop where everything as stream is discussed. Yes? Oh, yes. Yeah, it's OpenMoco C the web. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Timo. And there's OpenMoco Debian for everything which is Debian related. The packages are maintained in Git on git.debian.org. And we have a separate, unofficial, in the Debian, the Debian sense, repository for every package before going to main. So everything usually is available in this repository. And then we clean everything, and we adapt the packages to the Debian policy, and we go to main. Again, we have other resources like the wiki. There's two different wiki. There's the Debian wiki, where we have a page for end user, where you can see the installation, configuration, and problem, and devices. And there's a wiki page for everything which is packaging related, so for maintainers, where you have a list of bugs, how to view build packages, and so on. On the OpenWorker wiki, there's also two pages. The first one is um, an automatic 
installation page in the sense that it deals everything about install SH and how to finally tune your uh, Debian installation. And the manual installation page is the old page which was available uh, at the beginning of uh, DevConf 8 last year and from where we, found, we derived the instruction to create this script. This page, for example, there was the guy who installed uh, Gnome on the OpenMoco or, and then he moved to XFC. And you can, there are some information that are very, very good in this page, but it's, and it's a very long page. So if you want to read, you actually need to read both of the wikis. And you need, we still have not found a way to keep everything in one single wiki, unfortunately. The installation. There are some points that we needed to, to discuss and to take a decision. We decided to go for an install script because at one year ago, it was not possible to start DI on the OpenMoco. We need to. We want to support DI, but it was too much work, and simply bootstrapping uh, with CD Bootstrap or the Bootstrap a Debian installation on the microSD was quite easy. So this is why we decided to go for an install for a shell script instead of directly directly coding on the on DI. A graphical Debian does not fit on the flash memory, and so the microSD card is the only way to install Debian on the OpenMoco. U-boot, it seems that at that time U-boot could not read big partition, and one year ago there was, there was already there were already four gig mega, uh, four gig microSD, so the script creates two partition, one mega, uh, partition of uh, eight megabytes for the boot, and so for the U-boot or QI, the new boot system, and the rest for everything which is the root. The kernel is another not bad point by weak po but weak point. We cannot use the Debian kernel because OpenMoco has uh, his own Git repository for the kernel, and that they have quite a lot of patches about that. So it was too much, too much work to port every patches to the Debian kernel. And so we decided to use the OpenMoco kernel, compile it in a, some sort of Debian way. And then the U-boot. U-boot, by default, expect the first, the first partition on the microSD to be VFAT. And so we, we needed a way to bootify the U-boot environment. And this was done by Joachim with a shell script. And then we found that the, there's a package that can um, read and modify the U-boot environment. And so the idea is to use this package instead of uh, this, the shell script that Joachim coded. The details about the installer, this is, these are not all the options of the installer. These are some of the options. It can run from uh, any official OpenMoco distribution. So we tested it. So it is, uh, in some sense, some sense, distribution agnostic. It uses officially the Debian Bootstrap, see the Bootstrap package. We use it CD Bootstrap because it can install a minimal, very minimal installation, which is even uh, less than standard installation. It is highly configurable by different variables. As again, these are not all the variables that we have now. These are some, some of the variables. And it, can, it, it was divided in photo self-contained stages. It means that you can just try to test if your distribution has everything that you need to install Debian, or you can decide to go for everything. Or if something uh, is wrong, is going wrong, something does not work, you can continue later. For example, you can decide to install when some part at home because you have a fast internet connection and then move away and then restart. And, then, and this script has been quite heavily tested. So after one year, the script is still working. The script has been adapting to every changes that we have in Debian. And uh, it's, sorry? Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, there's a problem which I, I, still, I was still not able to, to understand. So it stopped lately in the last day. It stopped at the CDL, CDL per, uh, CD bootstrap, CDL per APT stage, whatever, and for no, no particular reason. And what is strange is that if you do the same command, cover as the question, if you do the same command manually, so not inside the script, it works. So it's, uh, it's something strange, completely strange, not related to the microSD, not related to the connection, not to the related to the APT repositories, and um, I don't know, I don't uh, know. In my case, it's uh, because uh, I don't know why, but it doesn't find the stall info. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Phil? So, um, because that didn't work, I started making, trying to install with Multistrap instead of the install script. Okay. Because that has the ability to merge two repositories, which yep. is exactly what we want to do. So, it could be a neater solution. Yep. But 
Um, so I hope I need to work by the end of today, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the situation. The result is, uh, oh, the image is not, the screen is not so clear. The result is something like that. The, this, this is the default result. So if you don't decide anything, you, in the end, get something like this, which is the zone application. This is the application developed by the freesmartphone.org guys, and it was intended to be a demo application and the bug application to be sure that everything that they coded worked. You have the phoning capabilities, contacts on the, C on the SIM, messages on the SIM, information about the GSM cells, in GPS that shows you the position and the different satellites that you are attached on, and some sort of like a profile where you can just switch off Every, every ringtones on switch on every ringtones. Then we have a keyboard, which is in our case the Matchbox keyboard. The window, because we decided to use the Matchbox window manager, which is very light, something like 600K, and you have keyboard and panel and uh, window manager itself. You have the OpenMoco panel plugin, which is this application here at the top, which can use to activate, deactivate every resources, for example, Bluetooth, GPS, GSM, uh, a keyboard, uh, battery, and whatever. And then, we have, as I said, we have based on Zone. Actually, what, what, it, what happened is that Zone was intended as a demo application, but most of the distribution use it as a normal application. So this is the default phoning application for the OpenMoco. Then, since Upstream decided to, to use Illum and the Enlightenment as a window manager, we have now, thanks to Albin Tonere and the Package E group team in Debian, we have now the, ability, uh, the possibility to install Illum as well on, Debian, on the OpenMoco. The major problem is that is this hungry? We need something like 25 meg, the last time that I tried, for everything. This is the Upstream choice, so in some way you, we need to support it because the team support, uh, decided to, to do that. We have more eye candy stuff. It's uh, pleasant, to, pleasant to, you, to, be you, to use, and you have some sort of animation, whatever, that you can disable if you don't want them. You have better keyboard support. It is something like the iPhone keyboard. Every time you touch a, a button, the button gets zoomed, so it's easily, easily usable. And you have some sort of dictionaries, in the sense that you can use uh, even this, the T9 uh, feature. Not really the T9, but you can have a dictionary that you can upgrade. And the major advantage is that this is a full desktop environment. So you have, uh, with one single application, we have access to all your application installed. You have access to the battery, monitor, configuration, whatever. And, and it works, actually. So then, what's the status as of today? These are the points. Every query package are in main, which means that you can accept zone, which is in new, so it will be soon in main. You can actually use Debian to call, and I use it every day, usually. usually. Every core package means that the framework daemon, the GSM uh, MOOCser for the daemon, and the configuration package for each device, because you need to configure um, the framework daemon for each specific device, and at the moment we support only two devices, GTA01 and GTA02. And then we have the kernel, which is 2.629, which is built from upstream OpenMoco in some like a Debian way. We have a Debian package, which is not policy compliant, not uh, how the kernel package should be built, but at least it works. It generates at build time a U-boot image, and then it ships the U-boot image, so it can be used without any modification. The Glamo chipset, finally someone wanted to, to, to code a EXORC driver, which is called XF86 Video Glamo driver, and which is now in Debian main already. And with this track driver, you can get uh, rotation of the screen, so you can use the screen in a landscape or in a portrait mode. It, is, uh, it is still has some bugs, but it's, we are, they are fixing that, and mostly they are working on support DRI, so hardware acceleration, and we, this will probably be give very, very good improvements in uh, performances. It's because otherwise we are obliged to use the frame buffer device, which is some sort of slow. There are some missing pieces in FSO framework daemon, but this is our upstream problem. These are not uh, Debian-specific problem. We are still missing a PMI and Wi-Fi application, Wi-Fi application. Paroli should, should fulfill this need, at least for what is uh, PM, PIM, for uh, wireless connection, they are based everything on uh, Conman, the, um, the, the program by Intel and Nokia, but it's still not yet there. 
So they are still missing it. And what's probably the main problem is that we are still missing a finally functional form gra graphical user interface. There's zone, but for example, with zone, you don't have uh, access to the logs of your calls. So if you lose a call, or if you have lost a call, you cannot know who called you, which is uh, quite fitting. And then they are moving every, everything from Python, this, which was the first, implement, the first language that they used for the implementation, to Vala. The idea was that they used Python because it was quite easy to code, and so to move on to define API and whatever. And then now that the API is quite stable, they are moving, recording again everything to Vala. There's a, so my framework, framework.org milestone 5.5 is the first uh, milestone that has some part in Vala, and it seems that there are really very good improvement. Unfortunately, as I will show you later, we don't have yet in Debian officially. Why? Okay, sorry. So the future work. We need to fix bugs, as usual, and this is probably the most uh, hard work to do because we need to not only fix bugs in Debian, but check if they are uh, uh, present in the other distribution as well, compare the other distribution with Debian, find the problem, and then fix them. There are not a lot of bugs, but there are some nasty bugs which are quite difficult to fix without upstream support, like there are, are, there's a bug with wireless. There's a, sometimes you, you, get, you miss some calls or you miss some SMS, which is not really good if you want to use the phone for everyday work. Then we need to clean some packages is an clean for Lintian and for the Debian policy. There are still some main pages that are not, uh, not available. There were some non-embedded fonts that are now um, not anymore there. And we should try to find a better location into the file system, actually, especially for frame of daemon. Because everything now, is, uh, it works, but it's not how Debian would like to have. The kernel is uh, probably the big problem. They, are, they, are, they have submitted patches to upstream kernel, and this, the basic support has been included in 2.6.31, but unfortunately, 2.6.31 doesn't boot on the open mock. So we need more patches for that, just a small subset of patches, and we need then to move to the Debian kernel infrastructure. So we just forget about the kernel, and the kernel team build everything for us, which is how we should, it should do. We should do. And the idea is also to provide a general kernel package for all Samsung S3C devices, which are, which are actually 23. There are, I think, 23 devices based on the S3C family. And one single kernel should be able to support all of them. And finally, we need to package new software, either from, coming from distribution like SHR, Qtopia, or any other distribution, or user-contributed software. This is especially true for because since the OpenMoco is quite a uh, handy device and it's quite easy to develop application on it, there are quite a lot of applications developed for the OpenMoco. And there are quite nice applications for that. So we need to move on and not only focus on the back-end part, but even on the front-end part. And finally, this is probably uh, the big improvement, the biggest improvement we, we really have. There are, we are trying to adapt the Debian installer thanks, thanks to Garden Styling to the OpenMoco. We had quite a lot of discussion, and the idea is to know, uh, to know having no U-boot modification. So you get your uh, free runner, you download something on the microSD, and you boot from it. And you, you don't need to modify anything else. So the idea is to use a U image, U-boot image, which contain the kernel and the init RD. And we can create this image, but we, the image, the, actually the kernel does not load, load the init RD at the moment. So we need to investigate on that. There's no physical keyboard, so we are obliged to start a network console with some preceding, preceded values until SSH is bring up, and then you can connect and continue the, um, the installation, either by USB or activating the wireless LAN and then continue by LAN. The, the work is ongoing. We have a first basic support in the sense that uh, locally we can do something, but it's not finished yet. And again, the kernel is the main problem because uh, the Debian kernel is already at 2.6.30, and 2.6.31 is compiled now, and we are still at 2.6.29. And in order to build the Debian installer images, we need you know, a Debian kernel, and which we don't have. So we are using unofficial kernels. And then one point will be to discuss which desktop, desktop environment should be the default, either Matchbox or going as a stream, so Illum, 
enlightenment, and this, is, this is, will be a choice that we need to do. From there, the other point is that we would, be able, we would like to install on the flash memory. And for the flash memory, the, we are, I think I thanks actually Per Anderson because he's working as a Google Summer of Code project, uh, adapting the Debian installer to the MTD memory. And the first choice will be mDebian, for obvious reason, because it's in line with the Debian development. It's a Debian project in some sort. It's a working and tested solution. We just need to test it and adapt it. We don't need to develop anything. And uh, we don't need any strange setups. And then the second choice, but this will be a bit more risky actually, is mixing flash memory and microSD. So this will be a full Debian installation on the microSD with some part on the flash memory, like for example the kernel or basic, very basic uh, root file system, whatever. The problem is that as soon as the microSD is in the, in the uh, mobile phone, it works. As soon as the microSD is removed, everything is broken. The other, another, another, another disadvantage is that with the separate, two separate installation, you can still have a backup distribution on the flash memory or on the microSD. In that case of mixed installation, you are like screwed if everything is wrong. So what we are looking for now, we are looking for maintainers to port MS, MS, freesmartphone.org, milestone 5.5 to Debian. We, still, uh, we already have some um, unofficial uh, packages and patches, thanks to Ico. He did a very good, uh, good, good job, and we need to clean these packages and then upload to Debian. This will probably break, there will not be a clean upgrade path probably from milestone 5.1 to 5.5, and so we need to deal with that. E17, so enlightenment, is another problem because every time we do a new, uh, the package E team do a new snapshot, there will be there's something that break. So we need to take, not take care of that, but test everything, every new upgrades. And there are other stuff that needs to be, to be clean. The kernel Debian package needs to move to the kernel, normal Debian kernel. And this will, will be probably be done by Hannibal and by Timo, with the help of Timo. And in this case, What's, what's the most, mostly be, should be done is checking every single patches by OpenMoco and be sure if it up, still applies or not, if it's still needed or not, what does it do? Because there are some patches in the OpenMoco kernel which are uh, only for, for example, GTA03, which is now abandoned, so we don't need it anymore, and it's useless to have them. Since Fuki now has an OpenMoco, I think he, he will work on MDebian support, so thank you, <laughs> we don't need to support it. And the freesmartphone.org guys already started to support other devices. So there's like OpenSZX, these are Motorola phones. HTC, which is uh, the same company that produced the Google Android phone. And we still have, we already have in a framework demo some support for the SZX uh, modems. So the idea will, will then later to support other devices as well. So finally, these are all the guys that are involved in some, in some way, sooner or later, with the project. And I will just finish with Zach for DPL, as usual. Maybe next year will be better. And everything is available on people.abian.org, don't gizmo, as the tilde gizmo slash talks. And I accept any question you have. Question, actually. Um, you said the two alternatives, one was, was to have it partly on the micro SD card yep. and that would break. Would it not be possible to have something like mDebian on the flash and then an overlay file system on the micro SD so that you could install packages on the micro SD, but if you pulled it out, it would just would default back to... Yep. I think it can be workable. possible. I think it can be possible. But I think that no one has never tried. So there's someone... Uh, in the past that tried to install a real Debian on the, mic on the internal flash, but then you need to adjust everything for every time, for example, you do an apt get update, apt get upgrade, you need to adjust everything. And the microSD is 256 meg, and the default Debian installation is standard one without anything else, 
So just uh, even not without uh, SSH, even without SSH is something like 180 meg, I think. So and then you 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 had, you had more like a framework daemon and you had 50 meg more. So it can be possible. And the idea, my idea would have to have Debian on uh, on the flash memory. So you can use the micro SD for everything else. For example, for GPS, you need a lot of data, a lot of maps, whatever. Uh, but at that point, we are not yet uh, at the point where you can easily move a Debian from micro SD to the flash memory. And the last time I tried, it was before FOSDEM, I tried Debian. It failed for a complete uh, unrelated reason. And then I didn't have time to try it. So, but I know that uh, MDBN can fit on 64 meg. So this will leave some space for other stuff on the flash memory as well. And we can target also the um, GTA 01, which has only 64 meg of space, actually. Um, so I was planning to use my primarily as a GPS device for yep. now. What is the status of the power management in the current kernel? Okay, so the GPS is probably the best supported uh, device. I mean, not device, but uh, tool in the OpenMoco. You don't need any specific kernel. It works with every kernel that I tried it. And now there was some problem at the beginning because there were some, um, uh, I would say, because of how the device is, is, uh, is built, the microSD is next to the antenna of the GPS. So there was some sort of inter interference that are now sold. And so now you usually get a fix in uh, 50 seconds, one minute, and then it stays connected and uh, it works and whatever. Okay, but I mean, is the phone turned off automatically? If it depends. Right. So if you use framework daemon, the phone is trying to be turning on. And it turns on the GPS only when the application asks for the GPS device. But if you don't use framework daemon, you can use the GPS without any, any external application. It's GPS daemon compatible. So every application that works with GPS daemon works with this GPS. And uh, you can even start framework daemon and disable all the other uh, sub-devices except the GPS. So you can, uh, you can think. And I, I think that the best thing is always to use framework daemon because this is how upstream work. This is how, where the most efforts are put. So and if you do that, how long will it run for? I think, so when we arrived here by bike, by motorbike, Roland has a GPS part for the last day, and the, I think that he switched it on in the morning when he left, together with GSM function, and uh, at the end of the day, it has something like 10, 11% of the battery with GPS on. So and phone, yeah. We don't know how long GPS only is yet. No. no, no. Okay. I don't think that there's any benchmark about that. I'll find so. out next week. <laughs> <laughs> the major problem about bat power management is that is the GSM chipset. Because there's some, not hardware problem, but by outdoor design there's some probably bugs. And so you cannot, some, most of the time, you cannot use the deep sleep state of the GSM chipset, which means that if the GSM work as it is uh, intended to, it can last, they admit some testing can last for 15 days, 14 days. And this is not the case yet. So if you start GSM network, then you lose power, a lot of power, actually. So it's on active service support, which means only the Yeah, it's on the various here. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I don't want to give you more work, but <laughs> it would be nice if you provide uh, daily or weekly images for testing. Uh, do you intend to do it? Uh, I'm <laughs> actually, I'm against providing uh, t images or root tarballs, because uh, what I see so is that when you install Debian, which take more or less uh, one hour, with the normal ADSL connection, which means 6 meg download and... Uh, I tried at the university with a very fast internet connection, and it took uh, 50, min 50 minutes, 50, so the, the difference is not really, um, how do you say, it's not, not big. I am against because you test everything which is in the phone while you install it. You test the micro SD to be sure that it works. 
you test the internet connection, you test your setups, and so this is something that probably I would expect other people do. The idea is that if you provide a tarball or the image, we cannot provide any image because the microSD can be different in size. We can provide a tarball, and this is how some uh, Debian-derived distribution like uh, Akeable one do, does. They provide the tarball, and then you extract the tarball on the microSD, and then you are, you are gone. But I personally would be against such, such kind of, uh, of, of distribution, actually, because, because the problem is that I can provide a tarball which is not updated now, because I, the, I built it uh, one week ago, and then you try to update get update and update get upgrade, and it, it happened that your microSD is not broken, but it cannot work with the microSD controller of the, of the OpenMoco. And so you, do, you are not sure if it's your microSD, if it's a mirror, or if it's something else. So usually, I found that if the installation finished without any problem, there will be no problem from the outdoor part. And if it's not finished, if it's stopped, for example, like we, the problem we had now, we need to debug it, and so it can be a microSD problem or other, other kind of problem. What is strange is that there are some, car, some microSD cards that don't work at all for no specific reason, and some other that work very well. Uh, it can be uh, the, f the frequency of the card. I've, yeah. read, I've read something about that. You, I don't know if, uh, what kind of card uh, you can set the, the frame frequency. size, megahertz or... There was, there was a patch about the frequency and the way to, to set the frequency. And it seems for some card would work it, and for some other not. And the major problem is that the microSD card reader is... So this is how you can put where the microSD card reader and the GSM part are. The microSD card reader is here, the GSM chip, uh, SIM is here, and the GPS is here. So it's, there's a lot of interference and uh, hardware interference. And, uh, so sometimes I, I have a car, a four gig uh, car, the Kingston one, which does not work at all on the Mopimoco and which works uh, nicely on my laptop, for example. Um, so it's really, there's, there's a page on the Mopimoco wiki about which card works and which card not, does not work. And usually you can check on that and uh, be sure that you buy a new card that works. Um, did anyone test, well, have any experience of flashware just running standard Debian on an SD card? Because uh, certainly my experience in the past has been very bad indeed using X3, but that was a while ago. Um, okay, maybe so they've got better. Yeah, this is another discussion point. By default, the Debian, the install.sh script use X3 for the root, and it seems that it should be safe in some way. But we don't have any proof of that. And so anyone can choose. You can choose by a variable, but there are no benchmarks, there are no real papers or any news about that. Yeah, I guess it depends on the, on the card. Yeah, because it can depend on the, the card. Control. So Old controllers used to only do proper wear on the front of the disk because that's where the fat cluster is. table lives. And the X3 table is right at the end. Yep. So, but I think maybe modern ones are better. Uh, and the other thing is, I guess, do we turn off a time um, in the configuration? Cause it is turned off. It right. is turned off okay. for the microSD in, and for everything, actually. Even for, for example, we have var and run, var run and var lock on MPFS and we turn on off a, a, a time, even if it, it should not matter. But it's every, every way it's turned off, yeah. But again, no one has, re, has do real benchmarks. So, okay. Thank you. Um, okay, I'm not an open user myself, but um, I've been thinking, it seems to me that or I think there could be or at least could have been a lot more adoption of, well, as you said, the phone UI functionality is not really there, I think. And one of the reasons why I haven't really even seriously considered getting, a, getting an open book of myself is that I really don't want a phone without a phone. <laughs> so, um, well, I've seen a a lot of what seem to me to be really cosmic projects doing all kinds of fancy stuff with GPS and everything. And I've heard heard of 
uh, people saying that we want to get the basic framework right before we do the fancy UI. That I really must say this all seems quite backwards to me. So this is even my first concern. This is, for me at least, this is a phone. And then once the phone is there, you can do more stuff. You can, do, you can use it for GPS. You can use it for wireless connection, for voice over IP, for whatever you want. But at the beginning, it's a phone. And unfortunately, something like three years later, after the first, mobile, the first device was, uh, was conceived and uh, built, we, are still, we still don't have any stable phone stack. And I can use it as a real life phone because I don't, I don't need a phone, actually. <laughs> so in the sense that I, for my work, I don't need it. Everyone usually know where I am. I work in a lab. I'm always there. And if someone needs him, he can call me, but on the normal landline phone. But I can understand for people that need a phone for their work, this is not possible. And uh, not only because the phone stack is not stable, but also because, for example, you have only the contact on the SIM. So if you have more than 250 contacts, or you have a very old SIM, you are stacked. Uh, so it's, they are working on it. There will be, there have been uh, really big improvements. I mean, I started to using it as a phone at Demkov 8, because my other phone died before, uh, just before leaving. So I was obliged to use it. But then, since then, I changed my, my usage of the phone. If I cannot reply, I don't care. <laughs> if I cannot send an SMS, I don't care. But if I'm in trouble and I need five minutes to switch on the phone, that's a problem. Because five minutes uh, are a very, very long time. So I, I completely agree. I completely agree. I, I saw that some, most of the people were um, actually were happy to have a gadget, a playing machine. But there are not a lot of people that think about the OpenMoco as a phone, as a real phone. And since there are not a lot of, not a lot of people that work on the phone stack, or any, anyway, on the Frisma phone stack, there are four people actively working on that. And it's quite difficult to, to, to do very, very big improvements in one time. Now that there's a company that should support FrismaPhone.org, we, uh, we can think that there will be some, uh, some changes and probably the phone stack will progress faster. But we don't know. And the other problem is that other companies are not really keen on, on in, invest on that because there's no phone capabilities. So it's something like, uh, yeah, it is not there, but no one is going on. It's not there, but no one is going on. So it's progressing. But you need to be patient. So, I mean, you need to wait. It's like Debian. It's really like Debian. So, yeah. Just one question. Then we still have only five minutes, I think, so. In the zone phone application, yep. are there plans by somebody inside or outside uh, to add the call lock capability. Is it difficult first? I don't know. I don't know if it's difficult or not. But the idea was that Zone is a demo application. Yeah. So the, the GUI, the GUI of Zone is like this since uh, not the beginning. It gets restructured, but I think eight months, something like that. And everything else, every new improvement is done on uh, three separate applications, which are part of the SHR distribution. And so we should check in that case. But Zone, uh, Zone is not, not no more developed, but no new feature are added to Zone. They don't want, actually. They don't want. And I can agree, I mean, in the sense that uh, is if the, if the Zone is, would have been used as a real application, people will start to complain, add new feature, fix the fix bug, whatever. In that case, Zone is working. And the problem that, uh, we, that you have with the call, with the SMS, with the GPS, are not zone-related, are related to the back, uh, background. So I don't think that uh, we'll, uh, we can add everything else. We will stay like this, and we should really move on the other application of, uh, which are actually SHR use the first application that were developed for the OpenMoco, which were the, um, the OM 2007.2 distribution, which was a GTK version. And uh, this were the single separate application application for PA, for contacts, an application for SMS, an application for phoning capabilities, and they were the, the application developed by Open Hand, which was a company, a UK company later built, uh, bought by Intel, and they were part of the Gnome Mobile project. 
So SHR, SHR got this application and they ported it to a Enlightenment libraries and to the framework daemon. So this application already integrated in framework daemon. They are not yet in Debian. They will be sometime. And uh, they are the future in a sense. So we will, we will abandon zone as soon as possible. As soon as possible, sorry. I think it's okay because we had five minutes, so. Thank you.